On today's episode, Beyond Their Frequency, we are talking to Wendy Gallant. You're going to love this episode. I know I did. But before we start, like and subscribe if you're watching me on YouTube. And if you're listening to me on Spotify, five stars go a long way. I appreciate you. And with that being said, let's start the show. What if everything you thought you knew about perception was just a start? Meet Wendy Gallant, a sailor who has spent her life racing across the world's oceans. Her her real adventure began in 2017 when she had her first encounter with unidentified spacecraft, leading to many more close encounters. This sparked her journey into a groundbreaking field, mindsight, a technique that teaches people to see without their eyes. Wendy's passion for mindsight has taken her across the globe training under experts from Russia, Romania, Canada, Australia, and the United States. Today, she's not just sharing her gift with others, she's giving the blind a chance to see her face for the first time in years. Wendy also teaches extended remote viewing and animal communication in her workshop, pushing boundaries of what's possible with human perception. But what if seeing isn't just about your eyes? What if there's an entire world of perception waiting to be unlocked? Wendy's journey shows us that the limits we place on sight are only illusions, barriers that can be broken. As we dive into this conversation, prepare to question everything you know about vision and reality itself. There's so much more beyond the frequency of what we think we see. With that being said, Wendy, <laughs> Mark. Wow, thank you so much. That was amazing. Yeah, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. No, I mean... I try to write something good that's worth you know, your your mm-hmm. fantastical status, you know. Yeah, it, it's a it's a pretty incredible story for sure. Yeah, what have, what's Filming. been happening? Yeah. Before all the craziness, before <laughs> before you get into seeing things and becoming who you are today, the main mm-hmm. question I want to ask you is: Who were you before all of this? Oh, I was just a long, young girl who was crazy about sailing. I was introduced to it when I was like 16 or 17, a farmer girl who would never, like I lived near the water, but didn't pay much attention to it. And my husband came home one day from, from sailing a little dinghy with a friend and went, I got to do this. So then he introduced me into it and that's the end of the story. So I started, I think I posted some pictures on my own Facebook of some of the experiences I've had sailing and I've done all the big races and. I was so passionate and I was so hip hooked to the adrenaline of it. And I was so hooked to the the talent of maneuvering these big boats in close quarters and, and the adrenaline and the excitement. And it, it just, it was just so exciting for me. And also the fun that we had meanwhile and training and meeting new people. And it was just, I just loved every minute of it. And um, and when we weren't racing, then uh, my husband and I bought a sailboat and we just started cruising and we started racing our own boat. And then we started cruising the Great Lakes. And, um, but our passion was, our passion was is to sail the boat to the highest performance it was capable of. So when we were on boat, on the boat, every second we were tweaking, we were adjusting. We weren't just sitting there. You know, what, and we love nature and everything, but our passion was is to sail the boat to its highest performance at all times. And we both loved it. And we bounced off each other. We taught each other. We, um, my husband was a natural. We found out, well, I found out I was a natural also. But, um, but um, we learned that each other um, could do the same. Like female, male, it didn't matter. You know, like I could go up the mast, he could go up the mast. We trained each other on, sail trim and 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 stuff and um because i'm small i was always doing the foredeck which is the most exciting spot to be and then um i found i was natural in the helm during races and i for some reason i had no fear still don't have any fear and close quarters and everything the closer the boats the more excited i got the more the adrenaline flowed so 
just, I don't know, it was just a passion. It just was crazy passion. And um, then we decided to take the boat down to the Caribbean. And that was a whole different experience. We went all the way down to Tobago, checking out all the islands, got into some really um, exciting experiences, met some incredible people. And um, yeah, we just fell in love with that also. And that was a holy, but then we did race down there too. So, you know, we took our boat into the races down there. So, you know, it was, it was a wild ride for a long time when we were all in the the big yacht clubs racing out of them and it was just it was just a whole wow experience for me and um and then cruising cruising to different countries meeting different people in the different countries we just we were all always into meeting the locals getting involved with the locals helping the locals as much we could and it was just yeah it was just incredible our favorite turned out to be belize and oh. this was before it just got so Honduras was beautiful too, but Belize was just, when we were there, we were cruising and we were the only boat, which was just incredible. And we'd drop a hook somewhere and then we'd have dolphins and huge fish and everything all around the boat. Like It was like a fairy tale. Really, really. I have to say it was like a fairy tale. It was just. And with, your, uh, and with, and with the love of your life. Oh yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I have to say, um, a lot of people freak out when they hear this, but I met him when I was 13. Yeah. Okay. We yeah. got married and I was 17 and it never stopped. Yeah. So um, we were very close, best friends of all things. Then when we were in Belize is when he said he didn't feel well. So back home we came and uh, went through a bunch of tests and all this kind of stuff. And um, long story short, he passed away in 2017. Which actually started my journey. Because uh, you can imagine the trauma. You can imagine I just went into a state. I ended up selling everything. and But that's when I started. And just tell me if I'm talking too much. Oh, no, 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 please. Go. And, and just before you do start, um, I'm sorry for your, for your loss. Like, it was, yeah, it was traumatic, yeah. Yeah, and it sounds like, you know, but prior to, to that, you were yeah. just... Going life to the to the fullest, you know, so, and, and traveling and you know, feeling like one and you know, and the fact that you met him early, I mean, yeah. if you know, you know. Yeah, exactly. He was he was an air force brat. Hey, I was there. Tra- oh, were you? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Air force brat. He traveled all over the world. His father just happened to retire just fifteen minutes from me. And that's how we met. He could have he could have retired anywhere in the world, but he retired here. But um, but he was my soulmate. There was no doubt about that. And so I think that's why it was such trauma at the time. And then I lost uh, the rest of my family after within three years. So it was a really tough time for me. Jeez. Okay. When you say lost, you mean like passed away type? Yeah. Uh, my husband. I. I. Um, I took care of my husband for five years before he passed away. And then a year later, and now you can imagine all the paperwork and all the stuff had to be done. A year later, my other, my brother um, had a horrible accident and, um, and unexpected and um, he passed away. And then um, a year later, my mom, uh, who I was caretaker for also, she passed away. And then my older brother, a week later, he away so i went into kind of um survival mode to take care of everybody and to take care of all the business and take care of everything meanwhile i don't know i think my brain went into some kind of a i don't know phase shock i'm not sure but when i would i started what i walked 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 i don't it felt like almost 24 7 i walked and down um, then I started sitting down at the beach here. I have a beach just down the way. And that's when I started seeing. And I started, I, almost every night, I'd see something, you know. And um, I think what happened is my brain, I come higher vibration maybe. And all of a sudden I started seeing some of them, but they would phase in. And I, like, I'd see the whole crowd out in the sky. And they'd phase in and then they'd phase out. It was almost every night. So, and I'm like, what the heck is happening here, you know? How close were you seeing them? Uh, this, these times, um, it would be like one I saw was a huge triangular crack. Yeah, uh, it was huge. And I'm talking huge. How would I describe? It would, like when I was looking up into the sky, it looked massive. 
I'm sorry. Was it like a house size? Bigger. It was wow. massive. It was okay. massive. Okay. And it, it, what it looked like, it was trian huge triangular, and all around the outside of it was this kind of a lime green haze. And I've learned later that it must have shipped it in, and then I saw it, and then shipped it out again. Right. Because yeah. it just kind of kind of did that. Right. And um, I had nothing to do with any of this stuff. So I wasn't That's really. True. Yeah, you understand. were just a witness of what was happening. So so just to make sure that I'm also understanding your 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 description, it was more like it was phasing in from a different frequency yes. into the sensor fre frequency. So this is why you're able to see some of the hues and, and things like that. And maybe you didn't see the, the entire ship. You probably saw piece of it right no i saw the whole thing the whole in thing. fact and one of the amazing things i distinctly remember is it coming in at being huge like a full triangle but oh. all around it was this green haze but then i saw a shooting star go right in front of it like a shooting star oh. so it was like odd i just saw a shooting yeah. star come through kind of like the middle of it like in front of right. it come right. through like that mm. and then phased out again so obviously came to another dimension and right, whatever so yeah so that was what am i i was seeing i was seeing lights i see lights movement in the sky i would see one time in particular um i was sitting there and i could see a light coming towards me of high in the sky just a bright 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 light and as it come towards me it got to right over my head and it was just a bright light and then right over my head all of a sudden, airplane lights came on. But it wasn't, it was like it shifted. It was like, okay, here I am coming in and I'm watching it. And then right above me, all of a sudden, it turned into like just the red, red lights, flashing red lights came on, but it didn't come on until it was over my head. Yeah. So that kind of proves what they can do, you know? So, um, but yeah, uh, I, I would go down there every night and I'd see, see movement, like strange movements going all over the place. Yeah every night and one night i went down there and it was just like it was like this i i was sitting at home and i could feel uh, i kept getting the feeling or the calling that you need to go down to the beach you need to go down to the beach and i friends show up and i was like serving them tea and everything and i kept getting this message in my head and so i was they were my best friends but i was like hurrying them along and then I left my house and I rushed down. And when I got to the top of the stairs going down to the beach, the sky was lit up with crap, like crap, like just lights going everywhere, shooting everywhere. Like, you can buy like a bunch of them, like just scattered? A bunch of them. Really? A whole pile of them. Yeah, what, a lot what, of them. What, where, do you mind saying where in Canada this beach is? I have since heard that there is a vortex out here. Where I live right on the shores of Lake Huron in Canada, Ontario. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Keep keep going. <laughs> just want to kind of just figure out like just kind of the area here that we're that we're talking about here. So this again, is you're about in the halfway down halfway down Lake Huron. I won't say where I live, but halfway down Lake Huron. I'm right on the lake. Yeah. I've since learned with this experience, I've since learned that there could be a portal out there and that they're coming through that. And maybe because of the state I was in, I was able to see them. Gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah. You were hearing voices. I heard, I, it was like a message. Okay. It was like a, a feeling or a message. Go to the beach, go to the beach, go to the beach. Yeah. And then and then, do you think the voices were, were telling you to go to the beach to, to see what you saw in the sky? Have you seen anything else on the beach since? Or... Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Me and a friend were sitting on the beach one day and we... We're just hanging out, and two things happened. One night, it was uh, we were sitting there, and we watched this huge ball of light appear over the pier in front of us. And it was like it was a ball, but the top part of it was oval, but it was almost like it was empty on the inside, and it was moving across. And he saw it too, moving across the top of the pier. And then another night, we were we had equipment down there. And he put red lights around the equipment so nobody would trip over them in the dark. And um, we were sitting there. We're just sitting here in the chair. And we both heard something. We both felt something. We got up quick and we walked around and we didn't see anything. But then we looked across and all the lights that were around his equipment had been moved. Wait, physically moved? Physically moved, yes. So you were around the equipment so you don't trip on them. And they so, were no longer around the equipment. They moved somewhere else. They moved, yes. They moved. 
but it was interesting that we both went, well, there's something around us. And right. then we both got up and to check it out. And that's when we both noticed that the lights around the equipment had been moved. So then what? So uh, you can imagine me. I know I've had people say that um, it's interesting to hear my story because I've had no previous experience and I've never, you know, I've never looked up any of this. I've never researched. I'm nothing. I have no idea what was happening to me. So then I flew down to um, Las Vegas with a friend one time. We were actually way out in the desert. We went out sky watching one night. We were sitting, we decided to meditate. It was like midnight. We decided to meditate. And then just as I was meditating, um, I saw a being appear right in front of me. It was, he was huge with a, a white, wearing a robe with a hood, white hood over his head. And um, while I was sitting, while I was there, I had no idea what was happening when I was sitting there. He reached out and he touched me right here. And at that point in time, my friend didn't see him. So obviously he came in, I don't know, through a different frequency. I don't know. But he touched me here and my friend was hanging on to me and I was just shaking. I was vibrating. I had no idea what was happening. Your friend was hanging on to you because your friend started seeing you shake? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But she didn't know what was going on? No, I had no idea what was going on. It was me that was having the vision and whoever. I had no idea. I've heard from other people the same thing has happened with them, but... That was the start of my holy wow moment. And then we went back to the um, to the casino that we were staying in. And as we were walking to the back of the casino, we saw this great big ball of light go flying over the casino. We both saw this over the casino and then down into the river where we were staying. And we had no idea what that was. We never heard any explanation for that that we saw either. I want to ask Mandy the um the would the being touch your forehead? What do you think came out of that? Was only side effects? I was um I have to say I was emotionally a basket case after that happened. I just um and I kept seeing the being after that, but I was emotionally shaken and um but I think that what I found over the years is I have been slowly giving out upgrades type of thing. I don't know how you would call them, but downloads, small downloads. Yeah. And, and I and I think, I don't know, I think that was the start of it. Now, you say that you you continue seeing the same name being, right? Um, when After that happened, I continued seeing him. And then um, when I came home, I never, I didn't see him ever again. So it just happened down in the desert down there. So I wonder what that means. And this is me just talking out loud. I here. know. I wonder what it what it means if if um if a, if a being with um higher energy frequency touches you I would I would assume more like a like a lower frequency than they are is it for the purpose to bring your energy up for some reason Yeah you know uh, you're I, seeing... I I obvious I actually understand now because um I've just recently had an experience and I don't know if we want to go there yet. But, Please no. Let's let's go straight into that. What do you okay. what do you think that you understand okay. that? Um, I had an experience just recently, and um, I walked into my park just up up the road here, and um, I just walked up beautiful beautiful evening, and so I always go up there to meditate because you look out over the water. So I walked up, I stood at the fan, and I was looking out at the water and looking at the stars. And then I turned around, and there was a mantis being standing there. I didn't believe my eyes, so I turned back around. <laughs> you can imagine. Looked out at the water again, and I went, okay. So then I turned again and around slowly, and he was still there. And what he said to me was, he telepathically said, I wasn't there very long, telepathically said to me that we need to keep our vibration high in order to create the world that we want of love and happiness and also when we can create the race of vibration that high that they can come down and meet us and therefore we can see them and see yeah. them and talk to them telepathically we all have the gift yeah yeah and that just happened recently i've i've heard of that and and so it seems like you know obviously you're being used as a conduit or vessel or you know, mm -hmm. spoke per person to spread that message mm -hmm. on this podcast, on any podcast that you've been to, well, that you that you talk to. So, uh, I want to ask for those that are listening or viewing this uh, that are obviously skeptical. 
just a question like when you heard this voice telepathically how do you discern it from your voice how do you know it's it's a different voice oh it's totally different you can imagine he's standing right in front of me okay like i say for some reason i've never been afraid i don't know why but it was just the voice that came in it was not my voice i didn't even understand that at the time right i was given that information you know it's your voice and it's like if it's like if i'm talking to you and i'm standing in front of you you know it's different Oh, exactly. it's totally different. It's totally different. Like it's just you're you're it's um, um telepathically they're speaking into your mind, so it's not that's not a voice specifically, you know. Like it's just the words that go into your mind type of thing. So it's so fascinating. Just so I love, fascinating. It. <laughs> love it, love it. Um, I think I think I caught in other um, interviews or videos. I'm, I'm not sure where you've uh, there's stories about Bigfoot interactions. Oh yeah stories about um, seeing spirits yes so let's pick one let's go in let's go into any one of those if you don't mind everyone loves the bigfoot one let's talk about the bigfoot one then <laughs> everyone nobody believes the bigfoot one but i had a witness with me good good so, hey that's that's a start that's a start yeah all right so go for it whenever you're ready Okay, well, we were we were out, we went out sky watching, and um, we were walking down this field and looking for a place, a good place, that we weren't in trespassing or anything. So we're walking down this field, and we both heard, heard Bigfoot say, please leave, there's young here. We both heard it at the same time. So we both, and, and he said, and the friend I was with said, yeah, I heard them say that. And I said, I did too. Let's, let's move out of the area. So we did. So we moved to another area and we were setting up the sky watch and we were having fun. I have to say that night we saw, I don't know what it was. I think it was because we were all having so much fun and, and get together and everything. But that night we saw fairies. We saw elementals. It was just like a magical night. Anyway, we, we, I was, we were just walking around looking for a good spot. And all of a sudden we hear rock being thrown and we hear we banging on, the, on a tree and everything. Well, then right beside my car came this rock, and it went boom, right beside my car. Physical and rock. Like, a big this rock. Land, lands right right near, next to your car. Right next to my car. So instead of freaking out, me and my friend started oh. laughing. Like, we just broke into laughter. I have no idea what. But we just broke into laughter, and at that, that moment, we both saw a Sasquatch face with a big grin on his face. Like, a, just a big grin. Stop right there. So, okay. I, I need to, okay. I'm processing this for one second. As cool, as cool as this sounds, it's so very, it's interesting because, okay, I've seen like these documentaries of people going Sasquatch, you know, hunting and all they're hearing sounds and things like that. But we're talking about you saw this thing grin at you. So I want to ask you what everyone's probably thinking description do you have a description of what you saw well it was just we both saw the very same thing it was the uh, your typical sasquatch face but with the biggest grin on his face like just typical, biggest well, grin. like a, like a like a giant man yeah yeah, gorilla yeah, yeah. Ape with a lot yeah. of fur yeah yeah, just yeah, yeah yeah smiling yes laughing did you hear him laughing no we just saw the smile we just heard so hey, i i actually sound insane right now no, 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 no. This is where, this is where, if anybody's, whoever, whoever is listening to this pod, podcast, it's because you're into stuff, okay? So, so if you're getting as giddy as I am right, right now, you're tuned in to the right yeah. frequency, all right? Anybody else who's not interested in this, you know, yeah. can, can just click off and everything. They're like, this is enough here. Anyway, the rest of us are interested, Wendy. Okay. So you... Did you feel anything from this uh, Sasquatch? Not, not, not at no. that point. What happened was, like, we both went, whoa, and, uh, and laugh- we were still laughing. And so then uh, my other friend was standing over there. I walked over to him, and he says to me, and he's very psychic, and he says to me, they like you. And I went, oh, well, that's nice. And we're still yeah. just chatting. Yeah. And so then I walked back to the front of my car and I'm leaning on my car, just leaning on the side of the car. And I look down and here I see Sasquatch. I see furry arms coming down over my shoulders and crossing in front of me like this. And like I'm, I'm looking out there and then I look down and I go, 
whoa, it was like an orangey brown fur. They don't like fur hair, orangey brown hair, and like this. And I looked up at my friends and I, my friend, and I went, somebody puts fur arms around me. And he looked at me and he goes, he's about 10 feet tall. And he, He's hanging on to you. And I'm like, okay. And then he just faded out. He just left. Should okay. that happen? I need, to, I need to break that down. Okay, so. And I have a witness. I have a full witness. All right. So one, you mentioned that your friend is psychic. So obviously, you know, they this person perceives probably more than you or you guys are equal? Um, or? We found we're both equal now. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Cool, cool, yeah. cool. Great. I mean, great for the upgrade on your part. <laughs> So when the Sasquatch started putting his, his hands over your shoulders, all you saw was was the arms and the and the hands, but did you feel it? No, I didn't feel it. I saw it. I you just saw it. Saw okay. it. Was it like was it like dense in some sense or was it like translucent or it was full vision of the arms around me. Okay. Like, full well, like if somebody was physically like doing it all the time. I get obviously tall enough that the arms came down like this around me. I mean, if anybody, if any, if any human were to do that to you, that's like an affectionate hug, correct? Yeah, he, he came from behind. Mm -hmm. So he came from behind and did that. And seriously, I felt no malice. I felt nothing bad about it at all. It was just like, like my friend said a few minutes before that, he telepathically heard, they like that. She, like they like you. And I went, oh, that's nice. And I just walked away. And not thinking anything, and next thing I have this, yeah. Uh, you mentioned that prior to that happening, when you, I think you said that you heard Bigfoot or somebody saying in the woods about leave here or something. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. What, like, did you know what it was? You knew it was a Sasquatch. Yeah. Oh, you, you knew just, right away. Like, you knew did right you know away. That it was because, um, did you know that because of the area there were people always the talking? feeling? No, the, no, it was, that was the feeling. Yeah. Okay. It was a feeling. We both had the feeling and we both, both knew. Was there an intention when you went to that place that maybe you might run into a Sasquatch? You had no idea. Okay. I had no so idea. It just came and when it when you heard it, you felt, yeah, this is Sasquatch. Like whatever it is, just yes. yes. I'm not saying anything can be explained. We know there's a lot of things that can't be explained. I'm just trying to just ask whatever comes to my mind as yeah. somebody they, they, you know, I, I've since learned, I had no idea anything about this, but I've since learned that they're multidimensional and they can come and go as they please anywhere they want to go. They can, they can, they can fully form out or they can, like they're multidimensional beings. So they're not like a, a real live, like people think they're a real live um, gorilla or whatever hiding in the bush, but they're multidimensional and they can come and go as they please. That's why people find them. You hear stories about them being in their houses or, or whatever. And um, yeah, they're, they're. Um... It's interesting. So for folks that don't understand multidimensional, uh, that's basically where a being can exist in any dimension. Like, for example, us beings, we exist here. Yeah. But there's, uh, there, there's other beings outside of us that can exist in every and all in any dimension that they're, you know, limited to, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, interesting. So this kind of makes me think, based off of what you said, the, the whole multidimensional existing, Mm -hmm. that this is why you can people may feel like there's a sasquatch behind that tree and then they go there and it's gone because exactly. it's not moving like a regular physical animal you're not hearing it shuffle through the through the bushes i mean it's literally gone at an instant. yeah, yeah. Um, and some people get pictures of them like they don't get a clear picture but they just get a bit like almost like it's phasing in or out i always call it phasing but um, but they're multidimensional, and so they can come in in full form if they want. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. There is some videos out there if they want, but um, but mostly because uh, when when people try to take photos of them, they have this shifty like phasing look, yeah. and this is why people say it must have been a bad camera. Exactly. Yeah. Or yeah. bad video, or why you know why couldn't you just zoom into it because it yeah. doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't work that way. You can't no. just take a photo with your iPhone of multi-dimensional being like, hey, hey, post for, you know, pose for me, you know, <laughs> a teapot or something, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah it, was, it was interesting. I, I had a huge shock just re not recently, a while ago, 
I just went to a park here just down the street where everybody goes. There's huge amounts of people going there. And I went in there day now and day and I was highly stressed about something. There was something going on with my apartment. So I was highly stressed about something and I went out there to chill, you know, walk in the forest. As I'm walking, well, I forgot the park. The day before, um, I was in there also and I was trying to I was trying to distress also, so I went and I meditated. I just walked off the path by a by the log there and sat down and tried to meditate, but I couldn't shut my brain off. And then while I was sitting there, all of a sudden I hear this roar. Like it came out of nowhere, this roar, and I'm like, what's that? And then I kind of felt that I should leave, so I did. So then the next day I was out there and I was walking down the same path, still trying to chill out, and I had the feeling that there was a Sasquatch coming. And in my, how would you explain it? I see from my right side, like psychically see from my right side. So as I'm walking down the path, I could see this Sasquatch coming down like big and walking like this like this and I'm like okay what's going on so I get all the way down to the end and I keep seeing this thing coming and then I saw full physical form of him standing beside the bench beside me I had no idea what was going to happen I had no idea why he was doing that it was definitely he and then um, down below like there was a river right where I was sitting on that bench there was a huge river and down below I started hearing bang 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 like something had this great big stick and was pounding on this tree and as that was happening the other one looked down and then took off so i don't have no idea what that was all about but that one was like a dark brown black color but i i don't know why all of that happened i have no idea i wonder if because i couldn't clear my mind or i couldn't get rid of the irritation that it was had maybe they're psychic and they were tuning into that and didn't like it or I was trespassing on their property and they knew I was psychic. So they were giving me the message. I, I have no idea. I have no yeah. idea what that yeah. was about. So there's a, so many different what ifs, you know, with yeah. that situation. Exactly. But so it sounded like the Sasquatch was coming at you with tension. I have no idea. He didn't, it didn't harm me in any way. It was almost like a warning. He was warning me. And mm-hmm. the other one was like, and seriously, I try to tell people now, be respectful, because they do have their proper, they have their areas where they do bring up their families, and they do bring up their children, and yes, they do shift, but there's areas there, so be mindful when you're out there, like, they aren't, they're, they're, they don't like being trespassed on, or they don't like people chasing them down either. Down also, from, from what you're also explaining, is that they seem to also have their own moods. Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. They, they feel like we do. Mm-hmm. Uh, if someone's in our area trespassing, we're going to try mm-hmm. to get out. We don't feel right. And, and again, we're talking about like for us, if we just see somebody with our physical eyes, we start judging and assuming, you know, exactly. you know what they're wearing, you know, some people race, things like, you know, all that stuff. Right. But with these multidimensional beings, they're now, they have a different sensory perception that they, they feel differently. And then they're, they're basing their their actions off of that and sort of yeah. feel. And I, I I wonder if that's just because of the state I was in. Yeah. They could feel that state and get out of here. Get out of here. I mean, it could be it could be as simple as that, Wendy. It exactly. could just be your energy. Uh, you know, because it travels. It travels, right? Oh, it does. Yeah. It is, yeah. So, yeah. They're like, this is affecting our kids. I mean. Yeah. It's like if somebody was in front of my front yard and I had like some young kids and they're out here cursing it up and everything. That's verbal cinematic frequencies that I don't want my kids to feel. So maybe you're coming in. I'm just kind of giving this. Oh, yeah, for energy. sure. But you're coming in with this negative feeling. Say, hey, get that out of here. My kids don't need to feel that. No, I, I always I always make sure I always make sure now that I ask permission and see if I get any negative feelings. I ask permission. Can I come into this area? And I always try to make sure I don't go in in a negative mood anymore. I don't, you know, like I try to try to ditch that before I go out for a walk. And that because you just don't know that was just down the street. Yeah. How many people even know that was there? Like they're in the city. They can appear anywhere. So people it's not you don't have to go out into the wild bush to see this. You hey. know, you just have to raise your frequency, yeah. raise your frequency and be able to meet them halfway. And you, too, can see them. But if you're in a negative frequency you're not going to see them if you're going out to shoot them you're not going to see them so 
so when you were saying that, I was thinking, going back to these documentary hunters, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we don't really know what their intention is. Mm-hmm. I mean, their intention is they're saying that, oh, we just, you know, they're saying that they're very, they're very, you know, uh, fans of Bigfoots and they want to see it. But what are their intentions once they run into one? Yeah, and exactly. I, I think, obviously, only they know. But I yeah. think these but they they know they're like mm-hmm. they know they can they can i've come to the conclusion that the ets the bigfoot and everything can read our minds they're telepathic they know what we're feeling they know everything so you walk in there with the intention of harming them it was kind of like we didn't even have the intention of harming them but they didn't want us around for the young to see so they told us to move off so yeah. that was the that was an eye opener for me to get that message please move off because we have young there is I have two questions. The first question would be if if somebody like myself was hanging out with you and we went to this area mm-hmm. and you started to experience it, them, would I just be there witnessing the situation through you, just seeing you react to it? Would they depends appear to me? Where depends where your frequency is because a lot of yeah. people, and there's a lot of people that go out sky watching looking for craft. A lot of people are really big fans. One person will see it, the other person won't. That's why, like, um, a lot of people don't believe it because their frequency isn't high enough to see it, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 it does. Yeah, it's all about frequency, right? And, and like you said earlier, yeah, it is. the med that the mantis uh, gave you was not just for you, but for just for everybody. Raise your exactly. frequency and then you'll be able to, like you said, meet them mm-hmm. and then you can interact, you know? Yes, right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I mean, when it comes to like first contact, there's gonna there's a lot of people that are that are not gonna be contacting anybody because well, they're... You know, there's so much talk about oh well, why doesn't the craft just come down and and land in front of the White House? And then my thought was, who's gonna talk to them? Yeah, who's gonna be the representative? Yeah, not unless they're open, open enough to be able to receive the messages. And there is some messages that are coming through in other ways because they're trying to get the messages out to us. But but that's the thing. They're telepathic. And we're naturally telepathic. We just have not used it. And that's where we come back to the mindset stuff. You know, like what I teach and what I've been told is my path is to, is to I teach mindset. I'm teaching people to see with their minds. But that opens up a whole whole thing then, and then you start you start seeing you. I wouldn't I don't know about psychically. It depends on the person, but you you start seeing other things. You start receiving receiving telepathically. You're just opening everything up. But the plus of it is that you can see with your mind. And yeah, it's, it's, let's, uh, let's segue into that, Wendy. So again, this is something that you and Rob um, I forgot his last name. Freeman. Freeman, yes. So you two, talk to me about that. How did you guys, how did you and Rob get together to then pursue this this teaching to other people? Well, we, we were friends before all this happened. I met him uh, through a mutual friend. And so a f- mutual friend of ours, Leonie Appel, Appel from Australia, she was teaching her kids, her grandkids. So she was a friend. So she sent this video up and said, you know, Look at what's what's happening. Yeah. And her grandkids were running around playing hide and seek and treasure hunt and everything fully blindfolded. They were reading the clues and everything running around with their blindfold on. And so we just kind of went, well, if that is, is that real? And it was like, yeah. And we said, well, if it's real, we want to do it. So then we just started training. We went to, we've gone to multiple trainers and um, we um, have practiced ourselves for a long time. And then after a while, we just discovered well we both got kind of the message that we need to get it out there so a lot of people can do this so yeah it took off from from there because you have people all over reaching out to you yes to all over the world it's amazing i had i taught a lady who was from south africa she was originally from costa rica she fell and hit her head and injured the area in her brain that gave her sight so she lost her sight she was in her 80s. Um, she came to me after four years of being totally blind. And um, we became really good friends. We chatted quite a bit before we even started the training session. But on the very first session, the videos on my site, very first session, she described my face. She described my face. She told me what color eyes I had, of what length she was telling me, what length my hair was, what I, what I was wearing. She actually described the placemat I had on the table in front of me. If that goes in mind. And um, and then the second training session, 
she started describing my apartment, said I have a door beside me and, and everything. She'd been blind for four years. Yeah, really. And she, I heard afterwards, she was very stoic during the training, you know, like no excitement whatsoever. But I heard afterwards, she was quoting all her girlfriends going, I saw her face. Wait how was she phoning her girlfriends if she's blind? Well, she had, it, all blind people have all this stuff. Okay, okay. Actually, right. you're right. You're right. There are there are a lot of different technologies for blind yeah, people. Yeah. I mean, they can uh, yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. So yeah. in her 80s, blind for four years, and then she's describing on your second session. You My apartment. And surroundings. So yeah. did she believe what she was seeing? Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. She fully believed in what she was seeing. Fully believed. She knew. She knew what she was saying. Yeah. So That's it was great. That was, that was the most, I think she was the most incredible one I ever trained. Everybody, um, I try to tell everybody that everyone has their own gifts. Everyone achieves things in a different way. And so um, I know a lot of people come in and want, want to do it a certain way, but that might not be the way that they achieve it. But everybody, like I say, everybody's individual. So, yeah. So I try to train that way so that everyone receives the gifts that they have and so that they can move on most people though most people do start out seeing intuitively whereas they see things with their brain but they don't op a lot of people don't open the full seeing like with your eyes mind sight that takes a lot of training but she first session she opened right up and she saw so she described me so that was crazy i'm wondering from your knowledge uh, with this intuitive site, is there any science that you can share regarding how this works? Happens? Yeah, how this works, how your, I know it's, I know it's your pineal gland, right? Um, mm -hmm. Can you explain something for those that you're kind of... To be, to be perfectly honest, there was a young scientist just recently, I should have sent you the video of it. He went around to all the teachers and he was analyzing everything that was going on. And what happens is someone who is very intellectual, very smart, but what is going on is you open up your pineal gland, but it's your right brain. I don't know if you've ever seen the video that's out there of the woman who had a stroke and the stroke was in her left side. So she was a scientist. And she was a doctor. In, 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 in brain medicine, she was a doctor, and all of a sudden, she lost the capacity to use her left brain. So for a short period of time, she started living in her right brain only. And if you could watch that film, I think it's on TED Talks. If you watch that film, she describes what it's like to be in her right brain. And being in her right brain, the feelings, the difference was unbelievable. And so when we're teaching... It's your left brain that shuts everything out. So your left brain's always talking to you. I we always say the left brain is a bully. The right brain's always right. So the right, the left brain's always talking. And even when we're teaching the mind sight, the left brain comes in and goes, "That's not right. That's not possible. You can't do this." And so the right brain's going, "Well, yeah, I'll look at. I mean, no, well, here it is. I'm seeing it." And um, the problem is, is getting the left brain to shut down and accept. That's the hardest thing. And the scientists that did all this research said at the end saying, we don't know how this works. We do know that intellectual people normally can't do it. And he said, scientists can't do it because they're so intellectual unless they can shut down the talk of the left brain. And that's most of the teaching we do is how to calm the left brain. And the left brain has to accept it without continually arguing and continually shutting it down. Because wow. he keeps saying, this isn't real, this isn't real, this isn't real. And even when people see, they don't believe. So it's a matter of, you know, it's a, it's a tough one. But when they're blind and they see, there's no no saying it's not real. So, right. But right. anyone else that looks at it, um, I've had many people on my site looking at it saying, well, that's not real. They're looking through your mask constantly. And But it is real. And people are wearing patches. They're wearing different la layers. And it is real. You can see. The same as with your eyes, with your mind. Crazy. That's, yeah. I mean, there's, there's people right now that are processing this right now. Like, like what did you just say? You just, we just so. had a, we just had a seminar and there's one lady, one girl, um, she's playing the piano with her mask on. She's a classical pianist. So she's now wearing a mask playing the piano. Like nothing. 
she can see it just like with her eyes. But she's the one that I told you that when you're highly stressed, it shuts it down. I think it's the left brain comes into gear and shuts it down. She was playing the piano when her two kids came in and the pressure to perform for her kids shut it down. And then once her kids left, it came back. So it's yeah. your left brain controls most. Like your right brain does it, but the left brain, if you can't shut it down, if you can't get your left brain to believe it, that it's actually happening, it'll continually talk you out of it. Nice. So, so it's kind of like, I like, I like how you reference the left brain kind of being the bully to the, to the right. So yeah. that means that the right needs to stand up for itself. Yeah. 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 So the left, so, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. The right brain is always right. And it's always yeah. giving you the right answers. And the left brain's the ones going, no. And yeah. <laughs> it's really fascinating. If you get a chance to watch that um, video and cool. TED talk, it's incredible. I mean, that's crazy. I mean, and, and, for you, how, um, what was your first experience when you first started seeing? Like, what, oh, what's the first thing that you saw? I mean, where were you? The first time I saw a full room site was when I was training with Michaela Estrati. It was the anniversary of my husband's death, and she came up into my room to just sit with me because she, she knew it was the anniversary. So she just sat with me, and she said, here, put the mask on. So I put the mask on, and then we we're just chatting, and I was wearing the mask really, really, really tight. And we were just chatting, and um, all of a sudden, I saw the whole room, the whole room in color, everything. I saw there was a table, there was a lamp, there was a chair. I just saw the whole thing. And I had a mask on tight. I had a mask on tight, and I saw the whole room. I'm just trying to process this. So, and you were like, how I'm seeing you right now on my screen, this is how your mind is seen. Full color. It can start out in black and white, but you can achieve the full color. While I was training, the second time I saw, I was training, and I'm saying this just so people don't get discouraged. I train all the time, and I was sitting there, I was training for a full hour, nothing. Okay, so I was getting frustrated, nothing. And then all of a sudden, and I'll just get this, and I would usually train with colors first. So I was getting nothing, and then finally I said, one more time, and I was going like this. And all of a sudden, I saw my hand, I saw the cut. The rims of the cup, the top of the cup, I saw everything in full living color. And I went, okay, that's enough practice for today. That's, yeah. Were you, was, were you just, were yeah. you, um, was it like not, not scared, but were you just shocked? Like, no, it wasn't. I was whoop, excited. Whoop. I was just totally excited. Okay. It was like, so you, wow. So you, cool. you basically tapped out at your highest point. You were like, boom, I got it. I'm good well, for today. I'm good for today. Yeah, that's yeah. what I do. Because you don't want to exhaust it. So when you're practicing, um, you're activating the pineal gland also and the right brain so you can get headaches. And I, when I first started, I was getting a few migraines. Yeah. So, but um, I just kept pushing it. But that day, um, then when it really started kicking down, I started seeing intuitively, not the full in the room mindset, but intuitively. And um, I could tell where colored cups were in the room and I could tell where, what directions they were, where they put them or that kind of thing. And then I could see letters and stuff started to come. But then the next time I saw full living color again was when I trained with Nikolai Denisov. Um, during COVID, we called them and we spent a full month training every day except weekends. And at the end of that, I was seeing my kitchen full living color. And I was reading and I was reading magazines. I was seeing pictures in the magazine, everything. So that's when it really opened up for me. But interestingly enough, people started talking me out of it, that it's not real. Interestingly enough. So I think it influenced me. So I just said to myself, well, you know what? I'm just going to start training without the mask and just close my eyes. So the difference in that is when you're training with your eyes open, your brain can accept that. Right. Okay, so you're behind the mask, your eyes are open. It may be black, but your brain still says you can see because your eyes are open. You take off the mask and close your eyes, your brain says, well, you shouldn't be able to see. So I just started training that way, and now I can see. I can see in different areas. I We call them windows. I have two windows here, windows here, and windows under here where I can see with my eyes closed in full living color. So And so that proved it, proved it to my brain that it's real because my eyes are closed. I'm not peeking through the mask, which everybody says that we were doing. But Nikolai Denisov was closed eyes also. Yeah. It, it's crazy. Even it's like people, even though that they see it, they still don't believe it. You know, exactly right. And uh, a mantis can be right in front of them and they're like, eh, it's a tree or something, you know, like, so it, 
we do this to our to ourselves kind of a, like a, not to get off this but just kind of a, something that came to mind regarding the sat what if i've heard theories that what if the sasquatch is the our original cousins right like there's a theory with the with the anunnaki that we were mm-hmm. genetic modified so i figure that whatever those humans that were mo- that were well there's cousins whatever those bipedal um hominid species that were there were genetically modified to be to become what we are today as humans but the others that weren't continued on the evolution path at that you know without being disturbed and maybe they became the the bigfoot have you heard anything i've I've actually i've actually heard that story but i have absolutely no idea i just go by what my experiences are yeah 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 yeah. I, i actually try not to research too much because you know i i find that um People consider me authentic because I don't research anything. And I just, every time something happens to me, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, what has happened? And then I'll start asking questions. So, right. No, I love, I love that you mentioned it too, because like somebody that would hear your Bigfoot story would then start asking you, like, you know, all these expert questions, right? People that have not met a Bigfoot, for some reason, they're considered experts of Bigfoot. And I'm like, how does that make sense? You know, yeah. it's like people who do all this book re- research become experts at this thing that they've never even gone to go see, whether yeah. it be a place or, you know, yeah. I'm an expert of the Pallades. Like, have you been there? <laughs> like, what do you know? So I'm glad you mentioned that you don't research this stuff. I You're don't. You're really speaking from your experiences. And, and that speak- is, to me, that is just credibility 100%. Yeah, I just speak from my heart and my experiences and what, and I have no preconceived ideas. They just happen to me and, um, and I just, it blows my mind. I'm always excited about everything that happens to me. And um, for some reason, I don't have any fear. So I. <laughs> I mean, speaking about fear, let's segue into spirits. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've heard that you could see spirits. So talk to me about, about that. Like, do you. Do you see them all the time? I don't see them all the time. It kind of settled down. But when it started for me, we were out sky watching again and we were way north. And it was really kind of bizarre. My friend was working on the cameras and stuff. And I was just walking around while he was setting up cameras and stuff for, you know, for, he's a photographer for likes to take night shots and stuff. So I was just wandering around and I saw this person standing on the beach, you know, uh, clear as a bell, um, blonde hair, blue eyes, white shirt and with suspenders and stuff. And I walked up to my friend and I went, do you see that person on the beach? And he said, no. And I said, well, she's there. <laughs> it's plain as day. And then, um, and then it was almost like he followed me. I saw him clear as day, full living color. And it was almost like he followed me. And a really incredible thing for me was um, I was talking to another lady, told her about that, and she could see him too and said, he's a spirit that hasn't passed. And he was, the story was, he was an 1800 sailor, sailed the Great Lake, and he actually connected with me and I was seeing, seeing his ship pounding into heavy waters. I learned later he connected with me because I'm a sailor. So he, he, he clicked onto that right away. And so I saw this boat. Huh? Right, how is he connected? Like, how are you seeing that his boat and him sailing? Um, he was showing me pictures. He was showing me visually pictures of it. So I was seeing pictures of this boat pounding down the lake. And what actually happened is he ran aground and the boat sunk and he lost his crew. He lost everyone. So he was responsible. He felt responsible. So he was standing on shore. And um, so we spent some time with him and helped him pass. But then after that, I was wide open and there was like things everywhere. And I had to say to them, you know, like, no, not right now. It, like, yeah. But that's the only time I've had it that clear, that visually clear. Yeah. Uh, so, wow. Okay. First of all, that was interesting regarding the sailor connecting with you and showing you his stories. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. That's beautiful. It's an amazing yeah. thing. It, but- and. So you were able to, he's making you under, understand, do you think a lot of spirits connect in that sense where they show you their history? I think most, it's like animal communication and that um, they all, they all see in pictures. I don't know if people realize that, but animals are telepathic and they actually see in pictures. So, wow. and it was the same way as him as he sees in pictures. So, you know, when people train to train a horse or whatever, 
they're verbally, it's like, it's like verbally talking to a person. It's like, blah, blah, blah. They don't understand what you're saying. So it's okay. not their language. So they, they, horses, dogs, everything, they can see what you're thinking all the time. How many times have you had a dog and it's all kind of gets up and runs to the door like 20 minutes before you get home, you know, like, wow. so they can, you know, so they're, they're telepathic. They can, they can tell everything. So I yeah. have, uh, have two, two cats and mm-hmm. I was like, they, you know, we always say with our animals, we connect with them, but I never understood it the way you explained it. Like that opened up a whole new way of me just looking at them. Oh, so, yeah. so you're saying, so why is it that do you think that when like, if I talk to a dog or a cat and I say like, come here, they're not hearing the come here. They're, they're just, they're perceiving. Exactly. They're, yeah, yeah, exactly. They don't understand what you're saying. They, that's not their language. So they're, they're like, you're, you're thinking come here. So they come, but they also, if you, if you want any animal, if you want them to come or want them to, they, they can telepathically talk to you if you let them. And they also see in pictures, but they can telepathically talk to you also. You don't how, have you don't have to speak to them. How would I mean it's probably a dumb question, but how would I how would I allow them to talk to me? Like, I mean, if I'm if I'm so willing, it's the whole vibration thing again. Okay, okay, okay. So I gotta give uh, I gotta hire my frequency and I'm ready to talk to you. <laughs> well, you seriously, know? yeah, you can start in a very minor way and then just you know, uh, like whatever you're thinking, they're hearing, they're telling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's like the first time I came to the realization of this, and this one blew my mind too. And this came right out of the blue, also. And as I was with a friend, and we were out hiking, and we came upon this animal farm, you know, like different kinds of animals. And we just kind of stopped and went in, stood at the door, or stood at the gate. And my friend took off walking, and I was standing there, and it was an alpaca farm. So, there was a huge alpaca chasing a little one. And he was chasing around, chasing around, chasing around. And I, in my mind, thought, well, that's not fair. And the, I didn't say it out loud. I just thought it. That's not fair. And the small alpaca stopped, looked directly at me, and I got the message, well, help me. In English. Wow. I know. I know. And I'm like going... I just heard that in English. I, I have no idea how, yeah. why, no idea. Yeah. Well, I mean, and like again, part of my intro was mentioning that you, um, you do, how you, you have a, a workshop that you work with animals. Well, I'm just, um, a lot of people have asked me about that, and so I'm starting to integrate it into my workshop. Okay, so it's a work in progress. I know how it's done. Um, I've taken some training with some people that do have it happen all the time. And so, because I wanted it to happen more, I had uh, I had two instances. I was training, not training. I was volunteering at a horse farm, and I love horses, always have. And um, I wanted to research this with the horses. And there was one day, all the horses were milling around inside the barn, and everybody was trying to get them outside the barn into the into the pasture. And they just kept milling around because it was feeding time. They didn't want to leave, so they were just going around in circles with everybody. And I just mentally said in my mind and pictured the pasture i didn't say it out loud i just mentally said it in my mind go out to the pasture and pictured it walked out to the lead mare put my hand on her neck and walked out and she came out with me and all the rest of them came out with me also awesome and i had another instance where there was a baby lamb the baby lamb wasn't very old and um she and her brother were put into this pen and they were just crying 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 and I just walked over to them, and this is like this is me experimenting. I just walked over to them, and I said, I said in my mind, um, I'm so sorry you lost your mom, um, but I love you. And I said, love hearts. And this little lamb jumped over her brother and ran towards me. Now, is that is that a coincidence? I don't know. No, no. I I when you just said that, I felt so much love. I, mm-hmm. I felt, I felt, I felt love and I, you know, I'm going to admit this and it doesn't matter if I'm a guy, but I, I had a, like a, like an internal tear because I do understand that the highest form of frequency is love. Yeah, exactly. Right. The lowest is fear. Exactly. So the fact that you uh, connected with that, uh, with that animal and it understood you, like, 
that just warrants my and it's just it's it really has become my passion i just love it yeah yeah. That's just amazing. I, I'm I'm so I'm so impressed with the fact that as a lot of people look up to you in this in the in this realm, you know, opening up your mind and and mm-hmm. things. And it's so impressive that you're still learning. Like you're still on that. Like you don't stop learning, and it no. it shows. You know, yeah. you're incorporating new 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 things. You're enjoying the experiences that you've gotten. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're still honing the stuff that you feel comfortable with, but then there's always new, new things. And it's, a, it's amazing. Yeah, I try to tell everybody to don't take it seriously because as soon as you take it seriously is when it shuts down. Just oh, enjoy it. Have fun. Just enjoy it. And like, it, it's an incredible thing. It all is just so incredible. And anytime something happens to me, I just get so excited. I'm just like, wow. It, the littlest thing is like, that is your brain. You know, like you're seeing that with your brain, you know. I right, for you too, Wendy. I mean, you, you know, no matter what you say that other folks have said about you, uh, you to me are a grounded per- person uh, that can given the opportunity to to see more than what we mm-hmm. normally, you mm-hmm. know my podcast beyond the frequency you know yeah. like, i'm gonna ask you a question before we wrap this up because i do want to respect your your time um mm-hmm. kind of from left field but i'm always curious on everybody that that comes on to the show so my my question is what do you think god is mm-hmm. i think god is source all that is we are all god we are all source we are all everything is yeah yeah. It isn't just one thing. It's just all. It's everything. The whole universe. Everything. Everything. Uh, everything. I, I don't know what the. I forgot what the saying was. That, um, I think it's one of the hermetic principles. All is mind, and and mind is everything. Something like something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Do I? I too personally, I do believe in that. That God isn't you know the sky daddy that everybody assumes or. Some cultures believe there's a dozen gods and, and subclasses. I think it's source, like you said. Exactly, it's source. It's, you know? yeah. I tell I tell folks, um, I tell folks, uh, I tell selected crowds, right? But I tell folks that you know that I am, I am a god. I'm not God. I'm a god because I have even in my pinky. I have even if I have a spark of his energy, I'm. That's right. A, so, yes. um, and I try to, that's kind of more for me personally to just kind of, uh, you know, like affirmations for my, for myself that I have the ability to be, to be great. You know, the, uh, the Mayans have a saying, Alakim, Alakim, which means I am another version of you. <laughs> we yeah. are all one. We are all one. Yeah. And that's how they look at each other, you know, and they, and they respect the light like that. I had a vision one night. It was crazy. I was just out walking and it was like something took me over. And I was, I know I sound crazy, but this actually happened. It was like something wanted to give me a message. And I couldn't, I couldn't move on. I had to, so I moved off the road and I walked into the ditch and it was something just took over my mind and it showed me, it showed me um, a bright light flying through the universe and another bright light meeting it. And the two of them went around and around and around and then became one, and then I received the message, we are all one. And then I, they let me go. Who was that? God, source, who was that? But that was a beautiful message. So That is beautiful. Wendy, as we wrap up, I am going to ask you three questions that I ask all my guests. Okay, well. Here, I, want to hear your, I want to hear your thoughts, okay? Okay. So here's my first question. Pull it up here. Okay, first question. If you could send a message to humanity that everyone would hear, what would it be? Raise your frequency. And, you know, if we all raise our frequency, all lived in love, we'd all get to get along and we change the whole, we change the whole world. Yep. So I can say. Uh, that, that's perfect. <laughs> My second question is, what is one mystery of the universe that you wish you could solve? That I wish I could solve. Wow. I'm just the kind of person that's all accepting how I could solve it. The universe, it just keeps coming into the mind of helping the earth survive what it's going through. Therefore, it's going to help all the universe because if anything happens to earth, it's going to affect everything. So we need to do something about what we're doing here. I love it. I love it. And the last question would be this. Beyond all the knowledge and experiences you've gained, what still leaves you in awe or makes you question everything? Every day is an incredible experience for me. I don't know. 
I just, I, I just keep thinking. I keep getting upgraded. I keep getting messages. I'm here for a purpose. I'm here to put out the message of what I'm doing, um, no matter the repercussions. But yeah, I don't know. It's okay. Sometimes I don't think there's an answer for certain questions. You know, mm-hmm, really mm-hmm. Think about these these questions. So I hope you appreciate them. But, but yeah, I do very much. So it brings everybody's thoughts to think people to think differently and i think we really need to do that and and just really appreciate what the world really is like people just don't realize the advantages and the possibilities if they just can tune in and open up and and uh and like i say start living in love accepting the neighbor i notice a huge change in myself when i just no matter what's going on i'm always trying to smile and just try to you know like and you can change somebody's whole life by just smiling at them. So I think we, if we could change the way we live on this earth, I think it could be it could help each other instead of always fighting and always, you know, it um, we could shift into a beautiful reality if we could do that. So. I think some of us are getting there. Hopefully everybody. Exactly. Uh, you know, and this, what, 40 years ago, conversations like this weren't so open, right? No. Or, years ago you know like if you if you talked about this stuff in public i mean you'll be ridiculed you know um Mm -hmm. or you'll be judged very harshly and nowadays people are more open open the conversation is free like there's so many people that you've seen in your personal conversations that are they want to know they're like they're trying to figure out you know like okay for a while this antiquated template of you know the government telling us this and and you know these uh so-called scholars or these poly tricksters telling yeah. us what's going, what's going on and now people are just like wait a minute time out yeah or reason they're getting these like bits of downloads are telling them stop stop yeah. listening to all that noise and like start start yeah. listening to your higher self to your inner yeah. start yeah. talking to yourself versus you know waiting for somebody people are patiently looking at the news and they're saying what are they going to say? What are they going to say? Who cares what they're going to say? Oh, no, I don't even listen to any of it. None of it. Because I, there's nothing I can do about it. So listening to it just gets me into that lower frequency and, and, and doesn't help the whole situation. By not paying attention to it, staying at a higher frequency. And you can even move into a dimension that everything is better. You can you can actually move into a dimension who can constantly criticizing our politicians and stuff isn't helping them. But if you spread the word that they're doing the best they can or anything, well, then maybe things will get better. Yeah. You know, it's always being in a positive, positive um, perspective and living in love and, and raising your frequency. And, and, and then you start seeing, I find that there's so many people starting to wake up now. There's so many people doing this. And more and more people I talk to are just starting to realize what's going on, like what's happening and what, what the world is really really like so and it's been a learning curve for me it's been a slow one but it's it's pretty incredible now yeah Yeah. and i'm still i'm still in awe every day i really am yeah the possibilities are amazing i um i will say you know we're all trying to see the whole picture but in order Mm -hmm. to see the whole picture we have to start understanding the pieces of it and i think the pieces of it are you me Mm -hmm. your friends your family the blade of grass outside the tree once we start understanding the pieces understand that every atom is conscious yes yes and respected then we start then being able to start move away from this zoom lens and start being able to start seeing it exactly after one experience that i had most incredible thing happened i was just out walking and i i received a download i'll just say that i received a download and after i received that i came up and i could feel the energy of every living thing everything on the planet every little thing i could feel the energy of everything when and you... i was i could feel the water i could feel like it, it just I, I was just walking and i was just received the message to sit i've had plenty of hope to just sit and meditate and when i came out of that that's what happened and i could and i was like just ecstatic you can know, just imagine you're taking in all this energy but the thing that the end thing that blew my mind is i came home 
and we have a pier. And I walked out to the end of the pier. And as I'm coming back, this guy was catching a fish. So he's bringing the, he had a big mouth bass. He was all excited. So he pulls it up and I hear, please put me back. I can't breathe. Now, does that blow your mind? Does that really turn your head around and go, oh my God. You, you, now, just to be clear for those that, that didn't catch that, you were sensing the fish. I was sensing the fish and I, and I heard it say, I can't breathe. Okay. Now, everyone I tell that story to, it just freaks them right out because they're when they're fishermen and stuff. You don't want to hear that, right? <laughs> you don't want to hear, you know, the people, the the butchers that like, you know, make yeah. our meat. <laughs> no, I won't hear it, you know. Oh, they my God. They don't want to hear it. Yeah, yeah. But, no. but, but you know yeah. what? They need to hear it. And they need to hear it because it's, you know, if somebody was doing that to you, you would want a Wendy to walk by and hear it. Or, hey, but 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 Caesar back. I actually yelled at him and I said, um, "Are you going to hang on to that much longer?" He said, "I just want a picture." And I said, "Here, quick, put him back." Good for you, Wendy. And, oh and my I god! And I him the picture. Good for you. You know, as funny as that is, you like. Oh my gosh, you have you seen that movie, Doctor Do Doolittle? Uh, yeah, probably, but I don't remember it. <laughs> it's it's American actor Eddie Murphy. He um he listened oh, to. Eddie Murphy. Yeah, he, he, he listens to animals and he talks to them. He talks to Doolittle because he talks to all the animals, but you're Wendy Doolittle. I mean, well, that was that was the most incredible one because when I came out of that meditative state and I was like, my vibration was been like, whoa, because yeah. I could feel everything. I got oh it's incredible. God. Yeah. But I, then, like the water, like I was walking along the pier and I could feel the water. But when he pulled out that fish and I heard that, I was like, whoa. So it like really, this opens your mind to what's going on, real. Wendy, like this, this pains me, but you know, because I could go on for another hour talking. <laughs> to you. I will ask you this, you know, if you're willing, you know, we might do part two of this at a later time, time frame and just more conversations, if you don't mind. Sure, sure. That would be yeah. awesome because I, I have so many different angles to go with this. You're such a fascinating person. Can I call you, are you a human being? I don't know. I was a I was a sailor for the longest time. Yeah. Oh, uh, we used to we used to sail, and I used to hang off the back of the boat and look at the stars when we're under full sail. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. No, was, I'll tell you one thing that I do know is that you're a special person. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um. So for the listeners and the and the viewers, tell them once again, Wendy. You know where they can where can they find you? I have um, a YouTube site called Learning Intuitive Blindfold Site, and I also have a Facebook site. It's private. It's under the same name. Um, I have often thought about putting it public, but um, all my subscribers want to keep it quiet for now, so that they can interact without any repercussions. So it's um, you have to ask the command, and it's Learning Intuitive Blindfold Site because there's two kinds of seeing. Yeah. Uh, so that's, find me there. You're creating a safe space. People love yeah. that. Or love my that. regular site, Wendy Glad, is just normal, and I just have all kinds of pictures on that. Oh, uh, Wendy, um, what's um before I before I close out here, I want to give you the opportunity to. Is there anything else that you'd like to say uh, for this episode to the to the viewers and the listeners? The floor is yours. Oh, I just like to tell everybody to really realize what the world's really all about, and and become part of the masses that are opening up and waking up and realizing what it's all about yeah keep your frequency high be happy be in love that's all it's all about i um, i am currently sitting in gratitude i am both i'm excited i i i am in a i'm definitely in a higher frequency than i than i was before we started okay. this episode uh, and plan on keeping it for the rest of the, the day Mm -hmm. uh, I said earlier in this conversation that energy tra travels. And I feel it, you know, um, mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. And just two people sitting down having a conversation mm -hmm. is powerful. Imagine five billion people on this planet to include what's already at a high frequency, which is your plant life, your animals. Exactly. It's a beautiful thing, folks. Like, let's try to get, get there. I mean, let's. Let's just straight up, just try to get it there, figure it out. If you're interested in raising your frequency, there's so many. Um, if you're 
we finding out about Wendy the line for the first look her up, just on her videos. Um, you can be impressed about what other people are doing and it may give you a little bit of courage or push that you've been looking for to try something new, you know. You know, a few years back, I ran into you, uh, meaning like online, and I may have saw that video that I think you posted it where regarding the kids running around blindfolded. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I yeah. did the video now that I'm thinking about it, but I asked the same question that you did. I was like, is that possible? And then boom, that started my journey into trying to do that. So if that happened for me just like that, it's yeah. going to, this, this episode is going to trigger for a lot of, a lot of folks. And I'm folks so I'm excited, everybody, as we have these conversations, all we're doing is making things better. Yes. 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 Exactly. And, and that's what we all got to start doing. Yeah. Awesome. We'd be much, so much happier if we all lived in that, in that frequency. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll, we'll get there. Uh, well, Wendy, thanks a lot. I usually kind of have like a segue as I go out, but I'm, I just, I'm feeling great. So the last thing that I'm going to say is basically, guys, listeners viewers young old whoever tap in tune in mm -hmm. you know you want to be there it's the best feeling forget psychedelics forget alcohol forget you want to feel good just start having these conversations that's it <laughs> you know if you're thinking about you know if you're thinking about you're going now if this is a friday or saturday and you're like man after this podcast i'm gonna go out to the club or go party and stuff no, we've given you we've given you exactly this was party. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Thanks exactly. for joining us. Right, Wendy? I'll leave it at no. that. Everybody stay humble, stay stay blessed. Uh, continue to and don't believe just the things that we see or the or the, or the mm. things that other experts, people with gifts, you know, are talking about. This is keep in mind, these are their experiences and they're just talking about it. All right. I challenge you, create your own experience, find your own path, do your own research. If it doesn't make sense to you, listen to your higher self. That is you telling yourself, hello, knock, knock. It doesn't make sense. Go this way. Follow your gut feeling, your intuition, whatever that may be. But like Nike, just do it. Exactly right. All right. And with that being said, everybody, uh, thanks for tuning in to another podcast with me, Beyond Frequency. My guest, Wendy Gallant, was amazing. Okay. And we will okay. see you next time for episode, but whatever. Next episode. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye.